I think I'm going live. I don't know if I've got this right. I don't know if my chat's working. I don't know if there's anybody out there. And the lighting is shocking. And I look like I've just crawled out of a hedge. Anyway, um, this is a completely impromptu haul because I wasn't supposed to be going sourcing. I've just not long been back from holiday and I posted off a load of parcels this morning. Good morning, Flipping Fantasy Finds. Hello, how are you? Look, I didn't even, look, my hair is like, Madness. Can I improve the lighting? Can I improve the angle? Possibly not. Oh, that's going to be better, isn't it? I'm thinking when you actually see things. God, dear, am I? Anyway. <laughs> Hello, Karen. Oh, hi, Mandy. Hey, it's good to see you all. I'm, uh, yes, I'm slightly out of breath, aren't I? I'm puffing away like a mad thing. Um, wasn't supposed to have been going sourcing. I have plenty to do. And I really, really don't need a whole load of new stuff. However, I was going to go shopping this morning after dropping my parcels off. And it turned out that the little site I normally go to was shut. I mean, just the whole thing, completely closed. But I could park in the car park. So I thought, well, seeing as I'm here, hello, Mandy. Hiya. Hi, Kelly. Sorry, my eyes are really bad. Um, I'm, uh, I thought, well, you know, I'm not going to waste the time. I'll, I'll go and look in my usual shop. And I looked in my usual shop and there was nothing, nada, not even a very small sausage, absolutely sod all. Hello, all 33 misses. Nice to see you all. <laughs> I'm sure you've all got work to do as well. Um, but I was just excited. I look, I haven't even taken my coat off. I should take my coat off. That's a bit silly, isn't it? Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so having found nothing in my usual shop, I thought, well, you know what? I haven't been to um, since. Um it's one of those shops, it's enormous, it takes a lot of time to go through, and I don't always find it particularly good. I'm just going to pull this blind down slightly, bear with me, because you're getting a lot of sun, aren't you? Well, when I say sun, I mean just too much light. That might be a bit better, or it might be hideous. Let's see how that goes. Oh, I'm blurry there for a moment. If I move really quickly... I create blurry images. That's probably a bit better as the light goes. So, um, yeah, I, uh, what did I spend? I literally had to run back to the car park and move my car and then go back to the charity shop and pay for this pile of stuff. All from one shop, all from one place. <sighs> and I spent the grand total of, there we are, £46.50. I don't know that's fun to you, but it was for me. Um, I'm sure I had more pieces than that. Oh, well, anyway. Okay. Um, so I was quite horribly excited. Um, I went in expecting nothing and found some good things. So they're not all entirely seasonal, I suppose. But hey, oh, more chat. Wow. Uh, da -da 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 yeah, sales are very up and down, aren't they? Um, I had a good day yesterday, and I've had some really awful days. So it's been really like that, my sales chart. Um, I think the fact, even the fact that I was away, I actually had a reasonably good week while I was away, which is random because I was on holiday mode and on, I think, a 10-day dispatch just to cover myself. And I only flipped that back to normal, I think, on the Friday didn't seem to have any effect. Who knew? I had no promotions running. I had no none of the things eBay want me to do. I'm just doing what I do because I think and I hope and a lot of the time it works. I have had, and I know I'm notorious for not doing sales videos, and it's because I don't, I still haven't properly worked out how to share my screen. And I think holding a phone up is, eh, you can't see a damn thing, really, can you? Um, but I did sell a John's Fendi jumper the other day, and that boosted my sales no end. So when I found something like that this morning, I was very, very happy. Um, right, one of the first things I found is very loud, so cover your eyes if you're easily offended. It's another one of these vintage dresses. That's quite garish, isn't it? Button down. I like the ones with belts because I think they're much more flattering. It's a midi, and surprisingly, it's not Marks and Spencer's. It's... Someone I've never heard of. 
This isn't a band you'll ever like to find, I don't suppose. Vivian Lawrence, whoever she is. Do you like that? I think it'd be a bit long on you, my darling, but it might be probably way too big. It still has shoulder pads with some functioning gunk in the shoulders. <laughs> Everyone loves it. You know, you can't miss this from one side of the room to another. And I think this retro trend is going to continue. It's in really good condition. It genuinely doesn't look like it's been worn. I did pay £3.50 for that. It's got two little breast pockets too. Are they breast pockets or just... No, they've just pleated it. And it's a nice quality. They pleated it and put a, a pocket-looking thing. It's got covered buttons. She says praying the one at the top isn't missing. No, it's not. No, they're not covered. Oh, I thought they were. Some nice black buttons there. It doesn't button all the way down the front, just down to the waist. Um, loot. They say it's, it's a nice, well-made thing. It's not my sort of thing, but there are many people. You know, you've got the laying girl kind of vibe going on there, so I was very happy with that for the price. I did actually buy something that I'm probably going to keep. <laughs> it's Leviosa, not Leviosa. <laughs> I'm such a Hermione. <laughs> people are always telling me. It says it's a man's top, although I can't believe it is because it says large, 14 to 16. So plainly, sense got that wrong. This is why I find if you're in one of these big charity shops that you know are staffed a lot by volunteers, you have to go through all of the racks because they misfile things hugely badly. I think I paid £2 for that, but I, I thought that was cute. I might sell it. I mean, it's white, which really isn't. But, you know, go nice with black. So I might keep that. I might not. I couldn't resist. I can't resist Harry Potter things. And especially when they're new. I, I see them trying to sell Harry Potter things. Um, yes, I do see them selling, trying to sell Harry Potter things that genuinely are pretty scuzzy, to be perfectly fair. They've been worn to death. Now, this was rather nice. Who doesn't like a bit of diesel? I find diesel goes very well for me especially anything that's only the brave, lovely Indian head on it with a mohawk. I love I love the styling of it. I sold a belt of this quite recently with a, only the brave on it, and that went quite well. It's a large size. I'm assuming it is actually a man's. Um, and it is in very good condition. No holes and things. There's a little bit of, a little bit of removable gunk. We will deal with that. Someone's been careless with their tea. So that was good. That was two. Uh, no, I did pay three pounds twenty-five for that, but I do know that diesel does command a premium, and I think I will do right with that. Um, I have fail. When I say I have fails, I know I have things that I buy it and I get it home, and it isn't quite because I don't always have time to research. If you're grabbing things off a pound round, you know, it's like being at a jumble sale, isn't it? And I haven't got any jumbles coming up for ages. I'm so cross because I want to source at Jumbles because this is reasonably cheap, but Jumbles are so much better, aren't they? Oh, let me just say, I have to take my glasses off to it. Lex, hello, hello, Sue. Oh, I've missed everybody. You see, this is it. I'm flipping hopeless, aren't I? There we go. So we got old oh, Shelsteruni. Yay. Lovely. And the crowd are in. Hello, Maria. There we go. Hello, Marinello Mania. I like that name, Marinello Mania. Very exotic. <laughs> there we go, have a proper read. Oh, hello, Kirsten. <laughs> In the shop, yes. Oh, ye of a shop. I have to I had to go up this morning to my to my garage, my Arthur Daly's lockup, and um and find some trousers that someone had bought. And I thought, yeah, I don't want to be coming up here just for one or two items. I really I'll try and not do it so often. The crew line. A new back and knees, please. <laughs> Make me bionic. That's what I always say about my husband, that he's bionic, because every time he goes through the airport security, as we did, it, he pings it off basically because he's got um, uh, plates and things, elbows and shoulders and God knows what else. The man's falling apart, really. Don't get let your child do rugby. That's, that's all I'm saying. I thought this was lovely. I normally don't go a bundle on white stuff, but this had this cute little dragonfly on the label. It had a cute little dragonfly, actually, bizarrely, on the back, near the button, because it's got this little keyhole detail, but it's actually 
a, a maxi dress and I and it's not a jersey one and I thought you know I know white stuff is a little oversubscribed but I just thought that was so nice it is a small size sadly it's a size eight but it's not a minuscule one and it looked well made, so I paid the princess some. I did pay four pound fifty for that, and I wouldn't want to pay any more. But I think that was actually the first thing I found, so that was kind of like, this is going to be expensive, but I'm going to look. Oh dear, I really, you know what I mean? I really can't read. Buy one, get one free. What will we buy? <laughs> I've missed something. Shoe sourcing. I haven't found too many shoes lately. Actually, it is strange. Oh, you're on lunch break. Oh, Lex. Well, turn will soon be over here. It'll come in quite swiftly. Now, I had to get this just because, you know. Tempted to keep for me. Love the stone roses. It is a, it's not a Gildan one. It's Amplified. And anyone who knows about rock band T-shirts, Amplified is a good brand. Um, it's, it's modern, but it's a good brand. And the quality of the cotton is so much better. Nothing on the back, but classic stone roses. Anyone remembers the them from back in the 90s? Lovely. I, I paid 285 for that, which I thought wasn't too bad. If I don't keep, I am pretty sure there'll be fans out there at a reasonable price. Yes, we love the stone roses. So that was it on the on the rock t-shirts. I always go through the t-shirts these days. I have very much learned that that's a very good thing to do. Who doesn't love hush? Don't know how quickly it'll go. Usual old label. I mean, these are these are what I call stealth brands because the charity shops are quite happy to label up sort of Viella and, and all these brands, but they they seriously do not seem to know about Hush. So I'm happy. It's a sort of a very short. I don't know. Is it a dress? Well, it, it's anywhere to my find out. On me, that would be quite dangerous. However, perhaps on other people, it wouldn't be so much. It's kind of a tunic shirt dress. Uh, it's a size 10, so it's obviously oversized. Because, but I, I'm drawn to red things. <laughs> it does sell fast, yes. I've got to go back and re-examine and make sure. I'm sure I've got something else that hasn't gone. It's probably because it's dropped off my listings. Um Viscose and elastane. Well, so it's not silk, but it's got a nice silky feel. And it's a fairly classic style, isn't it? What did we pay for that? Uh, £4.50. Again, I wouldn't want to pay more. Um, I'm all about keeping my expenditure down. Um, but I thought that was rather nice. And again, on the brands, don't know how good this one is going to be. I paid £5 for this. Now, it's about my limit, unless it's something extraordinary. But it's this dress, which is a nice sort of skater dress, and it's in a slightly, not neoprene, but it has that sort of feel to it. And it is, of course, Cos, which I know Cos is a bit over. I think, again, he's getting a bit overcooked. Um, but I thought the style of the dress was so cool. And I have just spotted. Now, you see, I've just spotted this here, where there's where the seam has come up. But I can invisible mend that. No problem. I can just... There's nothing wrong with the rest of it. There's no other faults. And that's very easy to fix. That's just because someone's sort of pulled it when they've sat down in it. Um, maybe maybe they outgrew the dress. It's not a particularly big size. It's it's an extra small. Oh, it's not going to tell me. European extra small, US extra small. So it's not going to tell me what the equivalent that is in the UK. I would say that's probably an eight to ten. Uh, even if it, it's probably doing better in autumn, but you know, these things rock around quite quickly, don't they? Oh, hello, who's here? Ding, 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 ding. Crispy, <laughs> crispy, just seen you there. Um, good to have a man in the place. That's lovely. <laughs> You're in disguise. Ah, how very cunning! A cunning plan. I liked this. I saw this a mile off, and I practically ran. It might look like a floral job, but it's got the telltale three stripes. It's Adidas, and it's got the spell out. I don't know if these are going for much anymore, but I think they will always have a bit of a following. It's really rather funky, and it's the Rita Aura. When they do collaborations, they, of course, they'll always detail it in there. It's the Rita Aura. It's actually an 18, so it's a nice big size. 
And if I can get that listed pretty quickly, that's going to be good for summer, festival season, etc. They're really quite nicely made, aren't they? These are just things. So I was quite pleased with that. I paid four pounds. Clearly, they weren't really paying attention when they listed that. And that's what I like about a charity shop where they don't pay attention. Because that's always a good thing for me. <sighs> Saving all this for last. Well, now, do the words John Smedley mean anything to anybody? I've kind of learned if you find one piece of John Smedley, there's a pretty damn good chance that there's more. Because people who like John Smedley, and it's a bloody expensive brand, new, it's horribly expensive new, um, but it has a, it does have a good resale, so obviously if you see it, grab it. But I, you know, I'm, I still don't like overpaying. So now I found all of these in various areas of the shop. They were not all together. They were not, not classed as men's or women's. They were just randomly scattered about the shop. So we have a purple one. It's a little bit bright. I'm not sure it's going to suit everybody. <laughs> um, every single one of these was £2.50. Uh, in case you don't believe me, £2.50. And it's a very unassuming little label. I think a lot of the trade shops don't even register. This is a medium. I'm thinking it's probably a man's because I think, yeah, the sleeves are very long. I have got short arms, admittedly, but the sleeves are very long. So a man's very purple, which is possibly why it didn't get worn to its maximum because I don't think everybody is into purple, are they? But these are so nicely made. I can't begin to tell you. They are so th They're a very thin knit. I mean, they're almost see-through. A very, very thin knit. They come with them. They just have a simple little label inside. Um, and this is 100% New Zealand Merino. So they're not cashmere, they're Merino. But I think I got nearly 40 quid for one, the one I sold the other day, which was a grey one, and that was a man's. But grey is probably an easier colour to sell than purple. I don't know. You may know differently. Oh, bye-bye, Crispy. Thanks for coming in. A whistling noise. Mm, I can't hear anything this end. Let's put it that way. Here we have. This is actually, is that black or charcoal grey? I think that's black. Nice black one. Again, V-neck, long-sleeved. Is this man or woman? Man. Definitely, this again is a medium. This might be, I don't know if one was an old label, one's a newer label. Um, this again is that super fine knit. This is a different label, you see, so I reckon maybe that was an older style one. This again, 100% John Smedley's Merino Wool Extra Fine made in Great Britain. So I think people like them because they're, so one was Australian or how bizarre. 2 by 50 again. Now, this was in the latest section. This is a red one. It's quite a nice red. I would say a cherry red. It's been classed as ladies. It clearly isn't because the sleeves are long, super long. This is a small, so they are different sizes. I don't, I don't quite understand it. There we go. Um, that's a round neck rather than a V-neck. Again, they're all in very good order. Make sure it's Merino again. I'm sure it is. Yep. Yeah. Merino one extra fine. That's three. I was getting well happy by this point. I can tell you, I was getting extremely happy. And these little ones don't do half badly either. This is a sort of like a polo shirt. Um, it's also merino. It's short sleeve. Made in Great Britain. This is a medium and in blue. Ah, Sea Island cotton. So it's cotton. It feels pretty close to what the Merino wool does, to be honest. Obviously, it's more of a summer wear. These have got no holes, no faults, no snags. Not even. I mean, seriously. Very, very good condition. So that was number four. And number five. So I found five in total. This is this is very orange. It's, it's a great colour. It's sort of tomato soup colour really rather than 
there we are but again in super super condition another one of these polos this one is small was that one small no, that one's medium it's very bizarre isn't it maybe one for fat days and one for thin days and that's sea island cotton again so slightly unusual colorways but five of the beggars i mean what can I say? There's a lot of money sitting there, and I'm getting those listed pronto. The only other thing I found, which was a surprise, is a T-shirt, but look who it's by. Oscar, get in. This was also £2.50, another brand they don't recognise. I'm going to go back there a bit more often. Um, it's a long sleeve. It's just a jersey, you know, plain jersey kind of shirt. Nothing amazing. Um... I did do a quick check on comps and they seem to go for decent enough money to make it worthwhile paying £2.50 on. 100% organic cotton. Size 1. Size 1 is their tiny size, but then to be fair, that's not particularly tiny. Depends how loose you want to wear it. And that also was in pretty good nick. So like I say, I've spent my £46.50 and I'm not going to presume the return on these, but assuming I can get 30 or 40 pounds each for these, and there's five of them, that's not looking too bad. Never mind the rest. So I was so chuffed and so excited I had to come and tell you all. Um, let me take my glasses off because everyone's blurry otherwise. So, a burning sensation. Ooh, Andrew's on fire today. <laughs> Oh dear, oh someone's photographing. Yeah, that's what I'm going to be doing after, so I'm just going to scooch up. High pitch sound here. Okay, I don't know if it is me, I hope it isn't. Yeah, okay, thanks for the heads up, um, Shelley. Yeah, I'm, they, they get, they literally get photographed, measured, bagged, as does my cashmere and silk and anything that I can be sort of super, super clumsy with because, yes. Yes, they are a nightmare. They are so fine. They, they, I, I can't tell you. They, they feel like nothing else. Never come across anything like them. I did come across a batch of John Smedley's once at a boot fair, and I think that might be was that last year, or it might have even been the year before. And they shot out. I literally bought about ten of them, and they were beautiful things, and they all sold really, really fast. So I have no problem. I have no problem with uh, with John Smedley. It's just it's not the sort of thing you come across every day. It's not something the market's ever liked to be flooded with. Let's put it that way. So that's kind of where I'm trying to pitch my pitch my store in that I just don't want to get caught out with things that are overdone and, and over sold, undersold, whatever. You know, we all know that that if somebody finds something they want to get shot quick, they'll undercut everybody. But these outs out, these go far quicker than they get listed. So I'm pretty happy there. Yeah, well, hopefully the high pitch sound isn't too unbearable. Burning sensation, because you're on fire. <laughs> it, it was. <laughs> and yay, Nick, hello. Your favourite pirate called Heather. There aren't too many of those, are there? <laughs> I always say there's always room to be a little bit more pirate. <laughs> um, yeah, it's... Uh, it was a good call. I had a nice holiday, but I came back and I think I had 38 parcels to post. And there were a couple I couldn't find, which was a bit stressful. The air was, oh, it was it was very blue for a while. Um, I did find them. I popped one somewhere safe, which is, oh, code speak for muck it up properly, Heather. And I will keep doing that. I'm, I'm obviously in the process of reorganising and reordering. <laughs> <laughs> yeah we've got we've got Shiv who she's not here today but uh, yeah she's uh, got a pirate name as well Shiv me Timbers and that's that's brilliant <laughs> um so yes impromptu lives all over the shop but yeah that that's kind of what I found today and I guess I shouldn't really go spending until my flea market on Friday <laughs> I might go and find some more but there's a real lack of um, jumble sales about the place at the moment. I missed one because we were on holiday and I have I missed a couple of goodies when, when I came up to Bristol. Um, so, <laughs> but, you know, it, with profits like that, the difference between paying a pound for something and 285 for something isn't actually horrific. Um, yeah, I'm still doing my stock take and finding things that for one reason or another, and I'm not necessarily blaming eBay, 
most of the time it's them that have dropped off my listing. So I've actually got stuff that I'm probably going to have to go and list again and start from scratch with. So in a way, I've got I've got a, a pile of stock. So did I really need more? No. <laughs> but do I all get going this morning? No. <laughs> so things are all good. They've actually there's actually in Tunbridge Wells there's a a sort of a, a yard sale trail, jungle sale, garage sale trail. That's the word I'm looking for. But Tumbridge Wells is so horrific to park in that my thoughts are trying to trail around there. Uh, oh. It's a bit of an off-put, really. Yes, life does get in the way of jungle sales, it's true. And the funny thing is people moan about there not being any, but, you know, I reckon if I'm going to be, you know, getting shed loads of stuff, she says carefully, not that I'm monetized, but hey, shed loads of stuff for very little money, it's worth me driving further. It's worth me going uh, a little bit further afield for them. But I don't want to be running into hordes of people from London or Brighton or wherever because they've got their own very healthy reselling communities. And I don't want a bun fight. I just like to go and pick. <laughs> you know, sm small ladies with sharp elbows are enough contest for me, but I I'd feel very awkward if I thought I was in comp direct competition with people doing what I do. That would feel very weird. <laughs> so, yeah, it's been nice to, to jump in here. I've kind of Came home from holiday, did a shed load of washing, uh, found all my, found some of my parcels, posted some of my parcels, and had to tidy up no end because the place looked like a bomber to when the family landed. And then the cleaner came the other day, which was amazing because it's lovely to have a cleaner, but not when you think, he's I've just made a load of mess, I've got to go and tidy up. An hour or so, yeah. Not that you need to stop. Well, I think you're, yeah. I don't have problems finding stock. I, I am, I know I'm lucky here where I live, having a car, being able to get around, having, being full time. <laughs> oh, Swamp Big is in. Hello. <laughs> From over the pond. Yes, it must be uh, earlier in the morning for you. <laughs> nice to see you. Welcome. That's lovely. Um, yeah, this was my, my haul that I, that you've just missed was was from a um was from our charity shops thrift one thrift store not a massive one compared to what you guys have over in the states but big enough to keep me busy long enough for me to nearly get a parking ticket for staying there too long so that was a close one <laughs> yeah ah bronwyn you're you're in ours aren't you wow yes country town lots of money items and no fees that's fantastic yeah it is a little bit strange if you sort of see somebody. It's nice if they come and say hello. And I always reckon there is enough to go around. But it, there's going to be a threshold point where if so many people are doing it, it's going to get a bit more awkward. 6.38 a.m. now. Oh, bright and early, Swamp Picker. <laughs> that's about as early as I want to be. Ooh, and Australia, yes, you are. That's, that's amazing. I still can't get over that, that people come and watch me fooling about on on a, on a tiny YouTube channel all the way from other lands. It's amazing. But when I was on holiday, I actually watched far more YouTube and, and was able to be in more live streams and watch people's things than normally I can, because normally I'm out and I miss them. Uh, and it's so nice to be able to sort of sit with your feet up in the sand and just join in the chat. Uh, it was quite a luxury. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the phone rang. The phone rang and you missed it. Oh, oh, Sue, you can always go back. Lots of John Smedley. It's a name to look out for in jumpers. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Keep an eye out for John Smedley. Smedley. You live up clothing halls. Brands and styles I don't get here. Yeah, you're probably going to find... Um, occasionally I'll, I'll pick up things that are very big in America and that because I watch an occasional um, American YouTube and I will buy some of the brands because I know they'll be liked here. Um, some of the more sort of boho stuff and some of the classier stuff. I don't know too much about the Australian brands. I, I did pick up a couple of things, it was Rod and Gum, which are very good quality shirts, but they're not known here. Um, so I didn't sell it for a great deal here, but I know they they go big style. But I sell a few things to Australia. I do have people buy. Um, more, more possibly Europe and the US, I'll get people buying things. But I probably sell about... 15%, 20 to 20% of my stuff. Oh, buy Swamp Picker. Um, yeah, I probably sell 15 to 20% of my stuff goes abroad. And I use the uh, global shipping program because I just can't get my head around doing it any other way. I'm a bit lazy and I know if it gets there and it's 
yeah, it's easier for me to deal with, which may cost me the odd sale. But if somebody specifically contacts me and says, can you send it directly, I, I'll look into it. Um, wow, yeah, sending anything electronic abroad is quite a risk, <laughs> quite a risk, Karen. I'm glad it, I'm glad it worked. And I'm glad you got good feedback because I know you've had some sticky times with these cameras. Um, it's an area I'm interested in, but I'm a bit nervous of myself sending anything abroad. Yeah, it will be expensive shipping anything, especially over to Europe and around here. But if it's something someone really wants, it's something truly amazing, then they're going to go for it. Um, but yeah, it's the shipping expense. I know GSP charges a bit over the odds on things, but I just kind of think somebody's really wanting it. Most of what I sell is real one-offs, apart from John's medley, clearly. Um, I, I like vintage clothes. I like knickknacks. I like weird stuff. But my bread and butter stuff has to be the high street stuff just because that's what I can find. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I do high street stuff, but I try and pick up as much top end things as I can. Yeah, is it, if you genuinely can't get it in your country and you want it, it's worth doing, isn't it? But you'd have to you have to be very sure stuff works and electronics are, are always a little bit of a, a little bit of a dodgy one there. <laughs> Mind you, I mean Nick sells some pretty amazing amazing stuff. Um, I w was been watching some of his uh, things to be sold. I just like the way he's got a Furby sort of, and it looks like it's sort of placed in in the sort of far corner, and it looks like it's about to jump got a toe over the edge <laughs> and that's the fascinating thing when I'm sitting watching it you can see his whole stock sort of spread behind him it's like oh my word I know that's not all of it Nick I know you hide it but um you will remember I mean Sue Sue my favorite auntie Sue you have a knowledge of octonauts and and Duplo and toys that I lost as soon as my child got old enough not to be dealing with that stuff anyway I instantly forgot it. Um, I, I've done the occasional toys, but I couldn't do it like you, so I really couldn't. Clothes, for me, are easier to package and easier to find. I still look in the toy bits, you know, but you don't really want to be stepping stepping on a three-year-old to get to get to it. Well, if it was, it was a flat Eric, I probably would, but I, I still go and look. I've never, ever found a flat Eric, and every time someone posts up that they found one, I'm like, oh, I still haven't found one. Or that weird monstery thing with the handcuffs. Is that a bit wrong or is that just me? I've not found one of those either, but I'd really like to find one. Um, but generally, I'll go and pick around in, in those sort of areas if, if I've not found much else. But I, yeah, I'll always look. I'll always look. You've got a massive backlog of electronics. Yes, I have actually got... Um, I can't remember what it is now. Was it wolf dove speakers and a, a whole system that actually goes was mounted in a wall, and I picked it up for ten pounds at the end of a boot sale. I couldn't even lift the bloody thing. It's still sitting in my shed. Furry handcuffs. Yeah, no, that probably wasn't what I meant. There, there's this sort of ugly monster troll-like toy that has, if it's complete, it comes with plastic handcuffs, apparently. Yeah, I really shouldn't go there. I think I should just walk away from that that idea. Uh, totally. <laughs> you see, you've had a flat Eric, so I'm so jealous. In fact, if I found a flat Eric, I'd probably want to keep it. I'd probably just want to keep it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what else have I got to get rid of that's electronic? But there are things I keep putting on my drafts list, and then somehow I never quite list them. Um, I just have I have fear. A fear of big electronic items. Two pen in a charity shop. Right, I'm really dead. <laughs> You're pulling my leg. Mm. Yes, I know. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah. Um, yeah, I had I had fun. I had fun today. I really enjoyed myself picking. That was a real bonus because I wasn't really looking. And that's how the universe supplies sometimes when you're not really looking. A bag of wee. I think that's what you mean, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Still got a bag of wee. We have a wee um, that we bought for my son, um, and we've still we've still got it. I don't think he's going to play it anymore. I'm waiting for it to sit there for long enough for I can say, can we get rid? Because we got all the Mario Kart games and and the little wheels and that. Yeah, we've, I used to sell wee a long time ago when I realised there was some value in it, and having had to pay up for a second hand one for my child. Um, but yeah. 
difficult to get rid of now. If I hang on to it for 10 years, it'll be properly old tech, though, won't it? <laughs> yeah, it was, it was, it was, could, could be read either way, that one. A bag of wee. <laughs> Bit like Lex, Lex, yes, Lex's live yesterday. That's like over disclosure <laughs> about hair colour. <laughs> uh, I keep seeing people with hair colour. I'm thinking, wow, I'd love to have my hair matte, some mad colour too. Maybe when I grow out the white ones. And look, no, no, maybe you shouldn't. Look. This is literally two weeks, and you can see. I did it just before I went away, and I've not even been back a week. So less than two weeks, white strip, white stripe on my hair. I'm getting bored of colouring my hair now. I'm thinking I, think I may just let it go, and then I'll be Gandalf the white instead of Gandalf the brown. <laughs> Marrow cut within a week. Yeah, yeah, it'll still do all right. I, I'll probably still sell it, but I don't really get rid of it. Dark purple. I used to, you know, that funny sort of aubergine colour, which probably isn't a thing now, but that very sort of ready purple. I, I did have my hair that colour. I used to put colours in it. I would be black and I tried blue, but it, it just, you know, the very dark blue, but it wouldn't take it. Beard. What? <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> Oh, oh yes. I was going to say, I don't think the beard would look good in purple. Must, must take care of facial hair. <laughs> the beard's going grey. Yeah, funny, it, that seems to happen for people. My husband's the same if he grows out, which he tends not to do now because it is so grey. It just, it just doesn't look right because his hair's still quite dark. Purple hair is so 90s. Well, the 90s are coming back. Maybe I should. That's probably when I had purple hair, actually. Or I quite wouldn't mind going what I call pagan red. <laughs> and it's that kind of henna red, that very dark red. But, you know, any colour is going to take time to wash out. And I think what I'd have to do is, is, is grow it out and have that sort of weird ombre look and just try and style it out a bit, really. <laughs> purple hair. Yeah. Got lots of purple clothes, though. We do, I do like a bit of purple. Pagan purple and pagan red and obviously black. Good colours. Good colours. <laughs> Blonde with pink underneath. Wow. Oh, yeah. I wouldn't want pink hair. I don't think that would suit my complexion at all. I think I'd look very ill, um, like a sick unicorn, I think. Uh, one of my friends, actually, amazingly, did have her hair. She had this amazing curly hair. So always envious of people with curly hair. That's what happens when you have straight. And she had it coloured like a rainbow and it was stunning. She had this picture taken from the back and it was just all this amazing colours. I was, oh God, I was so envious. But the problem is if you use colour and as Lex or anyone will tell you, it will fade like, like bilio if you wash it. And my hair tends to go a bit greasy. So the last thing I want to do is have, have very faded hair. <laughs> like, like a sort of an old retriever that's been left out in the sun too long. Um, no. In fact, my cat does that. He's got he's basically black with with white bib and tucker and knickers and paws, as they often are. But it, when he's been sitting out in the sun, he kind of fades off to a slightly sort of browny kind of colour. <laughs> it just fades in the sun. I don't want that. I don't want that. <laughs> your curls are disappearing as you get older. Oh, Sue, no, never lose your curls. <laughs> yeah, but I suppose, yeah, you can always you can always recurl, can't you? Do I don't know. I've, I've never, I've never been a, I've never been a friend of the hairdresser. <laughs> Can you tell? Um, yeah, curling and I used to do when I was a teenager. And we're talking a very long time ago in the sort of late seventies, and my hair was actually pretty much the same. I used to uh, plait my hair in tiny plaits when it was slightly damp at night. Go to bed, wake up in the morning, unplait it all. And I had this Kate Bush, Kate Bush. The only thing is Kate Bush is tiny and petite and delicate. And I'm, well, as anyone who's seen me knows, I'm, I'm none of those. <laughs> so I just look like a, an enlarged Kate Bush. <laughs> oh, dear. Anyway, why am I waffling? <laughs> I've shown you my haul and I'm chuntering on here. And you lot have probably got work to do, as have I. Because the light is, not there's enormous, great, fat black cloud coming over. And it wasn't meant to rain today, so it's getting all dark. And I've got to do photography. Maybe I'll do the measuring and do the photography this afternoon if it clears up. Maybe that's a good thing. My wall isn't black. It, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very dark blue. <laughs> I'm not sitting in a black room. Honestly, I know I have goth tendencies, but that would be 
maybe a little too far. It's more atmospheric, bottom of the sea blue. <laughs> You'll have to watch it back, brown girl. <laughs> How are you? You're all right. Yeah, I do. Um, it's a John Smedley Hall, really. Um, I must go and do something as well. Yeah, and I'm, I'm hungry as heck. No wonder it's only one o'clock. So I'm going to say tatty bye. Thank you all for joining me. That has been completely and utterly lovely to have your company. So go and earn good money. And uh, I will. You haven't tidied your office. <laughs> you don't want to see mine. Tidy isn't a word in my vocabulary, really. We'll just leave that where it is. So bye bye bye, everyone. Thank you very much for tuning in. And I'm going to see if it's going to let me end the stream. Bye bye bye. Not yet. No end. <laughs> Ta. <laughs>